Chapter 1. The Happiness Project is not a walk in the park. It's a long journey. This tidbit is aimed at helping you understand the true meaning of happiness and also to help you find a viable approach to becoming happy. Gretchen Rubin found that her life was becoming stale and very predictable. Although she had everything that you could generally term as living the good life, a thriving career, good husband, and two beautiful daughters, she felt like she was not appreciative enough of the things she had. And so, she decided to find meaning to the concept of happiness and how she could incorporate this concept into her everyday life. Apparently, there are no new insights on the topic of happiness, but the misconception that had inspired Gretchen Rubin to write this guide is the unclear route to becoming committed to always being happy. For instance, the concept of dieting is as clear as daylight since it basically requires eating healthy, eating less, and working out more. However, nurturing the willpower to stay committed is the challenging aspect. Likewise, commitment to being happy is not an easy process. As such, this summary narrates Gretchen Rubin's travails and successes with her happiness project as a template, which you can use to mold yours. The power to tweak your level of happiness is not as elusive as many believe. First of all, you should list out resolutions that would inspire you to become better. However, Gretchen Rubin advises that your resolutions could relate to specific details in your life that you can measure and grade over time. This approach will help you note your progress. In addition, you should avoid distractions that could derail you. Note that not everyone will buy into your happiness project, and some will probably ridicule your resolutions. Folks are usually about as happy as they make their minds up to be. Abraham Lincoln. Here, Gretchen Rubin highlighted recent research that found that genetics contributes to 50% of a person's happiness level. Religious beliefs determine 10 to 20%, and the individual's mental and behavioral framework account for the remainder. Chapter 2. Being energetic is the first stage of self-sufficient happiness. In the first month of her happiness project, Gretchen Rubin decided to incorporate resolutions that will help her increase her energy level. Different studies have shown they have a direct impact on one's level of happiness. Her first resolution was to go to bed early so she could get more sleep. As she indulged in this new ritual, she found out that it allowed her to wake earlier and she had the capacity to start the day off feeling more invigorated. Nevertheless, going to bed earlier was not as easy as it seemed. It is highly probable that activities such as replying to emails, watching TV, or tending to important tasks could spur you to push your bedtime further into the night. And so, Gretchen Rubin reveals that it is advisable to block the light emanating from the gadgets in your room. Likewise, you could adjust the brightness of the lighting in your room during bedtime. To have a lively day, you could do some stretches and prepare for bed way before your predefined bedtime. Her second resolution was exercising more, which is an apparent way of nurturing one's mental and physical health. Studies show that exercise, particularly going on repetitive walks, helps reduce stress and it stimulates the body's relaxation response. In addition, contrary to common belief, exercise improves energy levels. And so, your decision to exercise daily will increase your capacity to take on tasking activities or projects. Thirdly, Gretchen Rubin decided to clean out her space and remove clutter. Apart from the house chore reducing benefit of this resolution, clutter and disorganized environments have a way of constricting the psychological state of the host. Likewise, cluttered tasks tend to weigh on our minds and stop us from identifying the really important stuff. 
In light of this, it is advantageous to clear out your immediate surroundings as well as your schedule. List all the nagging tasks, tackle them, and cross them off your list. Lastly, Gretchen Rubin learned to act more energized. To do this, she became aware of her emotional states at every given time, and she would do things that would help her maintain her happy state whenever she feels like she is drifting away. Like Gretchen Rubin, you too can learn to smile more and take on more activities. Chapter 3. Personal Relationships Have an Effect on the Happiness of Individuals People tend to feed off the emotional state of the ones they care about. Therefore, Gretchen Rubin decided to tackle her personal relationship with her husband in the second month. During this month, she became aware of her undermining nature that had begun to stifle their communication, and she listed out resolutions that will help her improve their marriage. First of all, she chose to stop nagging as she came to realize that she only had the power to change her attitude and not that of her husband's. Bearing this in mind, she stopped complaining and delegating tasks. Instead, Gretchen Rubin reduced the things she expected from her spouse. Of all forms of caution, caution in love is perhaps the most fatal to true happiness. Bertrand Russell and in those cases where fighting was inevitable, she learned to find common ground. She would make sure that arguments are subjective and lighthearted. It is unproductive and emotionally draining to engage in fights that you and your spouse cannot come back and laugh about. While this is a given, there is also a connection between a happy relationship and how considerate the people involved are. It is not advisable to involve your partner in your little problems when you know that he or she has other issues that are taking up their time. It is important to know that love is nothing but an impractical concept unless the proofs are glaring. Therefore, Gretchen Rubin advises that you should practice giving as it is one vital way to prove love. By doing so, you will learn to love your husband or wife for who they are and cherish their values rather than fixate on their flaws. This practice will help you find happiness. Give your time, money, your body, your prayer, or any other thing that would let your partner know that they are always in your thoughts. Did you know? General happiness levels are about 50% generic, 40% choice, and only 10% circumstantial. Chapter 4 be deliberate about it and happiness will come your way. After resolving some critical issues in her marriage in the second month, Gretchen Rubin moved on to the next subject, which is work. She was formerly a lawyer, but she suddenly discovered that she did not experience the same exhilarating feelings she got from writing in her law profession, and so she decided to switch careers, which is somewhat brave. Always choose to do you by adapting to living in your skin. You should not let the unknown scare you back out, and acquiring new skills and venturing into unfamiliar terrain should not stop you from growing. More so, your venture into the unfamiliar, your capacity to surprise yourself, and the successes you register thereof are the things that will establish a permanent happy state. As such, it is imperative that you do not let the fear of failure trick you into being content with your comfort zone. Also, it is okay to ask for input from people that could help you grow or improve. Your ability to ask for help is key in helping you realize when to look for alternate ways to get things done or when to persist. In addition, it is important for you to work smart 
and enjoy every stage of your growth process as happiness is vital to career success. You will agree that happy people tend to have more input in teamwork, they collaborate seamlessly with other people, and they are great managers. And since our work takes up so much of our time, there is no separating our job from our happiness. If more of us valued food and cheer and song above hoarded gold, it would be a merrier world. J.R.R. Tolkien You may ask, what other things can you not separate from your happiness? This is parenthood. Although many parents say that parenthood brings happiness, nonetheless, the worry, expense, and inconvenience that comes with having kids could snuff the joy out of the whole experience. Just as you are trying to work out ways you can improve the emotional effects of your job, you should also find ways to establish happiness as the cornerstone of the relationship between you and your kids. Chapter 5. Happiness means having fun and being generous. Some people argue that happy people do not need to have fun to be who they are. In contrast, happiness stems from our ability to consciously create time to have fun. This period of leisure will help you sideline all forms of worries while focusing on your hobbies or creativity. Own your uniqueness and find what makes your fun side come to life. However, fun, play, creative periods, or whatever you might call it, are relative terms. There are various ways of having fun, and although this is a fact, many are unable to see the difference between fun and work disguised as fun. As such, fun for one person may not necessarily fall in the fun category of another. Finding the right fun for you can be tedious, especially if you base your choice of play on the more accepted forms of leisure. In your quest to search for your fun self, do not shy away from trying new things. Explore new activities, read about new things, and just maybe you could find fun in the most unlikely of places. This journey could require a bit of silliness or developing a knack for finding joy in little things. Regardless of your approach, ensure that you create time to play and that you make the most out of it. While you are working on becoming more fun, your friends could suggest one or more ways to spend your playtime. When it comes to friendships, however, note that your happiness also depends on the type of relationships and confidants you have. If you do not have anyone you can trust or talk to, then happy is not really what you are. You could start ensuring that you send birthday wishes to all your friends. Also, you could increase your generosity by motivating your friends. Remind them that they can achieve more. Likewise, it is imperative that you do not use your life to judge other people or chastise them because you believe that you are beyond their apparent flaws. More importantly, show up when they need you, make new acquaintances, and try as much as possible to stop gossiping. Chapter 6 Learn to utilize money as a facilitating factor for happiness. You must have come across the saying, money cannot buy happiness. Although this is true to an extent, it does not tell the full story. Money might not get you the happiness you so badly want, but it can give you the tools and comfort that could contribute to a feel-good mental state. To understand this misconception, you should recall how you did not have to worry or think about how health is contributing to your happiness until you are sick. The same way, the rich are oblivious to how much happiness money avails them until they become broke. 
Gretchen Rubin started researching the emotional leverage that money has on us, and so she set up resolutions that would help her maintain her happiness regardless of her personal finances. Firstly, she decided to indulge in a modest splurge that would have a direct impact on her happiness. For example, she had paid for an expensive workout session just to keep fit and healthy. Down the line, she noticed that indulging in splurges like this had helped her in her happiness goals. You too can spend on critical things that others can find absurd as long as it helps you project a better mood and improves the way you interact with your environment. However, try as much as possible not to go overboard. Spending more on frivolous things or on the unnecessary could come back to haunt you as remorse or regret could emanate from such endeavors. In addition, Gretchen Rubin advises that you spend out, replace those things that are already worn out. Spending out could also mean giving without waiting for appreciation or praise. Away from the materialistic nature of this subject, Gretchen Rubin moved to understand spirituality and how it helps with happiness. Here, she found that acknowledging that death is inevitable and the misfortune of other people helped her focus on the important issues. For one, meditating on this dark subject helped her value every second she spends with her family. It is vital to have a record or a journal of all the happy moments in our daily lives so we could have something to hold on to in the end. Chapter 7 Passion and enthusiasm naturally bring happiness. Passion, as it turns out, is essential, especially in the realm of happiness. Recall from the discourse on the work subject that your job should relate to something you love doing. The more passion you have for your work, the happier you are while doing it. To subscribe to this school of thought, you can incorporate your passion into your daily activities. Make time for the things you enjoy doing and revel in these moments. Also, you can optimize the time you invest in chasing your passion by refusing to let failures discourage you. More importantly, find new and faster ways to do it, which may entail that you learn new technologies or acquire more skills. All in all, your passion will demand that you pay attention to the tiniest of details. However, our passion is not the only thing that needs our attention. As a matter of fact, you ought to pay attention to everything from your actions to those of the people around you. This attentive state is what Gretchen Rubin called being mindful, programming your brain to always capture the things that you would normally ignore. To heighten your senses, you could indulge in meditation. You could also mold your decision-making process to obey what Rubin called the true rules. This concept is a set of principles that unconsciously dictate the choices we make. For instance, if your brain obeys the all men are equal rule, you are more likely to cherish fairness. Examine the rules that guide your subconscious and strive to replace the negatives with positives. As easy as this looks on paper, it might prove difficult because it involves a deconstruct of the way your brain functions. You can overcome this challenge by stimulating your mind to accept the new version of you that you are trying to mold. You could also record this new mind framework on an audio device and listen to it on a daily basis. Paste sticky notes in conspicuous places to remind yourself of the new habits to cultivate. Chapter 8. Positivity, Laughter, and Contentment Define Happiness There is no way we could talk about happiness and not touch on contentment. Happiness, as well as laughter and a good attitude, are vital requirements for people striving to live a happy life. Here, it is essential to ask yourself these questions. 
Do you laugh at yourself? Do you try your best to see the humor in people's attempt to tell jokes, funny or not? Your capacity to find reasons to laugh, even when things are not really looking good, would determine how happy you are. In other words, take things, particularly yourself, less seriously. In addition, laugh out as it helps lower blood pressure while improving immunity. When you learn to laugh more, you bond easily with people and it reduces conflicts. Your manners are also vital. Learn to control the impulse to alienate yourself from other people's feelings. Instead, acknowledge them and work on being polite. In the same vein, control the urge to always criticize people's actions or preferences and stop making negative comments that could dampen their spirits. Happiness is not something ready-made. It comes from your own actions. Dalai Lama, the 14th. Emotional intelligence is learnable. Being at peace with people around you fosters happiness in all other areas of your life. Conclusion After resolving all these issues highlighted in this summary, Gretchen Rubin found that it had become easier for her to sustain a positive attitude. The people around her were getting inspired by her happiness journey, and it showed in the way they bonded with her. Also, she had found meaning to real happiness. More so, it did push her to live in the now, and it also taught her to cherish the things she had before her instead of chasing the things she couldn't control. However, she noted that being happy is harder than being negative, and so there were times she had failed in fulfilling her resolutions, yet her progress through the year had taken her farther from whence she came. We must exercise ourselves in the things which bring happiness, since if that be present, we have everything, and if that be absent, all our actions are directed toward attaining it. Gretchen Rubin Happiness is not your natural state because you have found it easier to focus on the negatives, overlooking the beauty that surrounds you. As such, you must make a conscious effort to see the good in every situation you find yourself so your mind could seamlessly block out the negatives. Identifying and following the discussed resolutions will make you far more in control of your time, body, actions, surroundings, and even your thoughts. Getting control of your life is definitely an aspect of the happiness project, and a greater feeling of control will give you a major boost in happiness. Try this. Start your happiness project by listing 12 areas of your life that you want to change. Once you have your 12 core subjects, you should identify resolutions that will help you snuff out joy-sapping habits that relate to these subjects.